Okay, so this video features two of the biggest names in cancer conspiracies, Ty Bollinger from The Truth About Cancer and Tony Jimenez from the infamous Hope for Cancer Clinic. There's no good place to start with these two Muppets, but I saw this clip recently of them discussing the sugar feeds cancer problem that confounds so many of these people, and this discussion is such a trash fire that I just had to respond. So for those who aren't familiar with this age-old conundrum in the cancer fantasy world, let's have Ty Bollinger introduce the problem. We talked about the way that sugar affects our body, and the way that it affects the immune system and compromises it, and the way that it feeds cancer cells. But what about fruits and vegetables? Don't they contain natural sugars? Dr. Tony Jimenez shed some light on this important question. Cancer cells can only assimilate R-spin molecules, R-spin sugars. Those are sugars that rotate to the right. So Ty, let me ask you, have you taken an amino acid? Sure. 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 Like, like what, Ty? I've taken lysine many times. Okay, lysine. Sure, anytime I get like a fever blister on my mouth, I'll take a right. few lysines. Okay, the others was are carnitine, methionine, proline. So what's the letter in front of that amino acid? L. L. Let's discuss what L means. L stands for levorotatory. That means left spin. Okay, so the molecules in the lysine that you have taken are spinning to the left. Okay, now we need to pause the tape here before we let Tony get too far ahead with his mistakes. Now the first thing he said is that cancer cells can only assimilate our spin molecules and sugars. And we'll come back to why that's wrong soon. Now the second mistake, and I'm being a bit pedantic here, but it does bother me. When Tony tried to name the other amino acids apart from lysine, he named carnitine, which isn't actually an amino acid, and he also named methionine and proline, which are amino acids, but he's missed the other 17 canonical amino acids. Now it would have been a bit odd to just list them all, but it certainly sounded like that was his intention. And he also made two more mistakes. The first was to say that the L in L-lysine stands for levorotatory, and the second was to say that levorotatory molecules spin to the left. Now, to understand why these two things are wrong, we need to talk about stereochemistry. First, let's consider your hands. They're both made up of the same components, four fingers and a thumb. But you'll notice that while they look similar, they aren't actually interchangeable. You couldn't transplant your right hand onto your left arm, for example. And it's for this same reason that you can't shake hands with yourself. So your hands are mirror images of each other, and this general property is called chirality. Now, when we consider the arrangement of molecules in 3D space, the same thing can happen. Molecules which share the same chemical groups and physical properties can be arranged differently around a chiral center, giving rise to mirror image molecules, and each one of these pairs is called an enantiomer. Now, because these mirror image molecules are made up of the same stuff, you can't tell them apart very easily. Thinking back to our severed hands example, we couldn't tell a left hand from a right hand by counting the number of fingers or weighing the hands. Now, fortunately, there is a way to tell enantiomers apart in chemistry, and this is by seeing how these molecules rotate a plane of polarized light. Now, when the light is rotated to the left, the molecule is called levorotatory, and when it's rotated to the right, it's called dextrorotatory. And for this reason, enantiomers are also sometimes referred to as optical isomers. Now, there are two ways to assign this stereochemical property to a molecule, using a lowercase d in italics or a plus symbol for dextrorotatory, or using a lowercase l in italics or a minus symbol for levorotatory. So that's why Tony is wrong on the first point. R spin sugars or L spin molecules, or whatever he wants to call them, aren't rotating or spinning in any particular direction. They just have the property of rotating a plane of polarized light. Now, I also said that Tony was wrong about the L in L-lysine meaning levorotatory, which might be a surprise even to people familiar with stereochemistry. In fact, L-lysine, like 9 of the 19 chiral amino acids, is in fact a dextrorotatory molecule. What the small capital L really tells you is that it shares the same stereochemistry as levorotatory glyceraldehyde. And these small capital letters are a different nomenclature used in biochemistry because regardless of which way they rotate a plane of polarized light, it's more useful to group amino acids by which ones are able to polymerize with each other to form proteins. And polymerization requires that they all share the same stereochemistry at the alpha carbon. 
Now, glyceraldehyde is used as a reference point for this stereochemistry for some arcane reason. So to be clear, the italicized lowercase letters do tell you whether a molecule is dextro or levorotatory, but they aren't synonymous with the small capitals generally prefixed to amino acids, and it's wrong to say that L-lysine is a levorotatory molecule. So before we get back to Tony, let's make a mental note here. Of the 20 proteogenic amino acids, 19 are chiral. All of life on Earth, from bacteria to plants to bears, uses this same set of L amino acids for their fundamental processes, like making proteins. The D amino acids are used in exceptionally rare circumstances. One interesting example is a certain molecule in platypus venom. And whilst we're on this subject, I want to plant another flag. One of the curiosities in biochemistry is that whilst biology uses L-amino acids, it uses D-sugars. That will be more important later. Now this property of life to prefer one enantiomer over another is called homochirality, and it's really what allows us to assimilate carbohydrates and proteins from other organisms by eating them. And this concept applies to essentially every cell on Earth. But let's get back to Tony because he's about to introduce his central thesis. Okay. Remember I said cancer cells can only assimilate right spin molecules. So that's the opposite. Right. Human mammalian cells can only absorb left spin molecules. That's why you take an L lysine, okay. not an R lysine. Okay. The difference with cancer cells is that they could only absorb right spin molecules, right spin sugars. What are the right spin sugars? The processed sugars, mm. the white sugars, the enriched sugars, the synthetic sugars. Okay, so there's so many problems in this clip. Now first, Tony confuses a third system of nomenclature for stereochemistry. When he says that you wouldn't take an R lysine, he's referring to the absolute configuration, which uses the Kahn Ingold prelog priority rules to assign each chiral center as either R or S. This is different again to the two previous naming methods we've discussed, and whilst it is true that life does not generally use R amino acids, there is one exception cysteine, which can only be incorporated into proteins as the R enantiomer. And it's worth emphasizing that these three systems of naming chiral molecules cannot be used interchangeably as Tony does here. So here's Tony's big idea as I understand it. Normal cells use left spin molecules and cancerous cells use right spin molecules. Processed sugars like those found in chocolate or donuts are all right spin and feed cancer, whilst left spin sugars are the fruity tooty good ones found in apples and grapes. So let's talk about why this is wrong. Now firstly, if Tony wants to split molecules off into left and right spin, he must be using their configuration relative to glyceraldehyde. And as I mentioned before, life uses L amino acids and D sugars. So when he says human mammalian cells only use left spin molecules, his own logic is working against him because biology uses sugars of one spin and amino acids of another. Now secondly, cancer is formed when cells from your own body start to proliferate out of control. They are human cells, and like all cells, they use the same L amino acids and D sugars. Now the way that cells proliferate is by making a copy of themselves. At a fundamental biochemical level, there's no conceivable way for a cell to copy itself into using the opposite stereochemistry. And I'm not quite sure how else to explain it. If Tony knew the first thing about biology, he would never have come up with this idea. So going back to Tony's point about processed sugars and forgetting his muddled understanding of stereochemistry for a moment, let's just consider where sugars come from. Well, they come from plants. You grow sugar cane or corn and you can extract the carbohydrates. And whilst it's possible to use various industrial processes to alter these carbohydrates, like breaking down starch into glucose or converting glucose to fructose, there's no step in these processes capable of inverting the stereochemistry of these sugars. Now you can buy L-glucose, which has the um, wrong spin, for scientific research, but it costs about as much pound for pound as gold because it's so difficult to make. So you're not going to be putting it on your cereal anytime soon, even though it probably would make a rather effective calorie-free sweetener. So this theory of Tony's is dead in the water. Cancer cells use the same enantiomers of sugars and amino acids as every other cell on the planet, and processed sugar is extracted straight out of plant material. There's no step to change the stereochemistry. But anyway, we should let Tony make some progress here. So at Hope for Cancer, we allow our patients, in moderation, as everything should be, to eat organic 
pesticide free, clean, natural fruits. Mm -hmm. Because when God places fruits in the Garden of Eden, they are left spin molecules. Of these thou shalt eat. Okay. So they are helping our normal cells. So I don't really know if there were any stereochemical consequences to the fall of man, and I'm not really sure it's worth discussing the theology of Tony Jimenez. I don't imagine it's any more sophisticated than his understanding of science, but it certainly irritates me that he's relying on religion to bolster his credibility here. Now, putting aside this other rubbish about organic and pesticide-free food, there's nothing wrong with Tony telling his patients to eat fruit and vegetables, but we have to be mindful of the risks and benefits. There's nothing specifically cancer-feeding about soda and chocolate, and it's cruel to withhold these things from terminal patients who won't see any benefit from eating apples instead. And when it comes to people who are expected to recover, again, they should focus on eating a healthy diet. It will reduce your cancer risk, but it's not fair to scare people with false information about cancer feeding right spin sugars. When man fools with all this, we're in California in this interview. In California, they have something called a grapple, which is a combination of an apple and a grape, and right? A grape. Yeah, it I've looks like an that. apple and tastes like a grape. That's not <laughs> got me, right? So, yeah. so for sure, that has a hard spin and don't take that if you have cancer. But um, this, is, this is my concept that cancer patients can take in moderation healthy sugars and we need healthy sugars right so this reference to the grapple is really quite puzzling a grapple is an apple soaked in grape flavoring it's just a normal apple pulled off a tree at which point i can only assume that tony agrees that it has l spin sugars and then it's flavored with methyl anthranolate and this is a naturally occurring compound it's one of the chemicals that makes grapes taste like grapes it's not a chiral compound so it doesn't have any spin and the methyl anthranolate used to make grapples is probably produced by an industrial process but i'm struggling to figure out why adding a perfectly safe flavoring to an otherwise normal apple could alter the stereochemistry of the sugars. This just doesn't make any sense. Or oh, maybe Tony thought that a grapple is a hybrid of a grape and an apple. But even if it was possible to hybridize these two fruits, and it isn't, it's not obvious to me why Tony thinks that would invert the sugar chemistry of the entire organism. But let's forget about that because Tony's about to say something far, far more stupid. Uh, let's think about a, a PET scan. We know about PET scans. What molecule are they, or what contrast medium are they injecting? 2 fluoral deoxyglucose D-glucose, a right spin sugar. Mm. So the cancer cell absorbs Can it. absorb it, and the PET scan lights up. Okay. Right? So any right spin sugar, it's an it's a un, uh, uh, unnatural sugar. Okay? At every point in this video, Tony has descended further and further into intellectual chaos, and this really is a remarkable failure of thinking here. The D in deoxyglucose has nothing to do with the stereochemistry. The common prefix D is used in words to indicate removal, separation, or negation, as in dehumidify, detract, or deconstruct. And the deoxy here simply refers to the removal of a hydroxyl group, which is replaced by a radioactive isotope of fluorine as a source of positrons for the PET scanner. Now, the fact that there's nothing unusual or nefarious about deoxy sugars really should have been pretty obvious to anyone with even a cursory interest in biology. I'm pretty sure most children are aware of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, arguably the most fundamental molecule in biology and found in every living organism on the planet. Deoxyribose is a sugar component of DNA that forms part of the backbone. Now, I don't really know what the implications are for Tony's model when it turns out that the building blocks of life itself are made up of the dreaded cancer-causing right spin sugars, but trying to follow his logic inevitably leads to confusion. So the reason that some cancers actually light up on a PET scan is because they use a lot of glucose, and that's because they're growing and dividing much faster than the other cells in your body, and when you think about it, that's really what makes it a cancer. Tumors are made up of cells from your own body that have started to proliferate way too quickly. But that doesn't mean that other cells don't also take up this radioactive sugar. They actually do. And if you ever look at a PET scan of someone with cancer, you'll see that the brain lights up as well, because it too consumes a large amount of glucose, not because the cells are dividing, but because they are thinking, except perhaps in the case of Tony Jimenez. 
So no, PET scans don't use a different enantiomer of glucose to selectively image cancer cells. They use a fluorinated version of the same D-glucose that all the other cells in your body use. So cancer patients, in Dr. Tony's opinion, and I respect what they have to say, you could have honey, maple syrup, molasses, sugar cane, as long as it's natural, okay. unprocessed, unadulterated, and of course free of pesticides and all those things sure. because they're not going to feed cancer cells. Wow, that's fascinating. I, you know, that, that really answers the question that I hear a lot and sometimes it's kind of hard to answer these questions. People say, okay, cancer feeds on sugar. We all know that. So is it okay to eat blueberries? Is it okay to eat grapes? Is it okay to eat fruit because it has natural sugar? Mm. That explains why it would be okay to eat natural fruits, whereas the processed sugars, they're right spin. The naturals are left spin. Right. Cancer absorbs the right spin, not the left spin. Right. That's fascinating. Let's look at another uh, viewpoint in this. Dr. Gerson, mm. Max Gerson. Actually, I don't think I want to hear Max Gerson's viewpoint. Now, watching the end of this video, you can see that Ty Bollinger thinks he's actually learned something useful here. Unfortunately, Tony's explanation is frankly laughable. And watching this clip brings to mind the quote attributed to H. L. Mencken. For every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. Now, if you watched my video and found it confusing, I can only apologize. Stereochemistry isn't really that easy to wrap your head around, but unlike Tony, I'm not willing to make things up and I'm not going to dumb things down at the expense of accuracy. The real answer to Ty Berlinger's question, though, isn't that complicated. Refined sugars and processed foods are bad for your health because the other nutrients are stripped out and they're very calorie dense. When you eat a piece of fruit, for example, you might get the same amount of sugar as a chocolate bar, but you're also getting water, fiber, and other vitamins which your body needs. And that's not to say that there's no place for processed foods. They have a longer shelf life, they're less carbon intensive and costly to transport, and these things matter when it comes to making food affordable and in some cases is environmentally friendly. So when it comes to cancer, processed foods are associated with an increased risk of developing the disease. So let's all eat more fruits and vegetables, but most of us don't need to swear off chocolate and there's no reason to think that you can change the course of an existing cancer by altering your diet. Now the only reason that Tony invoked any of this rubbish about stereochemistry is because he has discovered that two of his beliefs contradict each other. Firstly, he thinks fruit and vegetables are good for you, and he knows they contain sugar. And secondly, he thinks that sugar feeds cancer. And rather than investigating the basis for either of those beliefs, he's fabricated this utterly absurd workaround. Okay, I doubt many of you made it to the end of this video. It was kind of boring, but I did my best. Hopefully the next one will be more exciting, so don't unsubscribe just yet. I'm recording this a few days after I did the rest of the audio, and I think I might have been a little harsh on processed foods. There are lots of advantages to these kind of foods that I didn't mention, and it's not fair to say that all of the nutrients are stripped out. Some will last longer with preservation, and some processed foods are fortified. So don't forget to rate the video, and if you want to see my channel grow, please share my videos, but maybe not this one.